Is everything smooth? Inside Frontier's head office in Denver. An airplane that's been on the ground and trying to get out of there now for over an hour. Is their command center tracking planes around the world? Arlisha Nisby is right in the mix. It's basically a jigsaw puzzle. She helps flight crews stay on schedule. As an aircraft router, she handles the problems too. We see the demand for pilots and for flight attendants on a daily basis. It's something the airline industry has been dealing with for years, and it's expected to get worse. This is fantastic. We're the hometown airline. Frontier CEO Barry Biffle says the Denver-based airline is ramping up, <laughs> expanding flights and gates at DIA. You know, we've got over 100 aircraft today, 114 to be exact. Uh, we got over 200 on orders. The latest problem to solve is who will fly the planes. The management consulting firm Oliver Wyman predicts the airline industry is short 8,000 pilots, and that number could reach 30,000 by 2025. We're starting our own farm club. Brad Lambert leads Frontier's flight operations team. He created an $8 million pilot recruitment plan. Just keep those crosshairs in the box. The idea, attracting people off the street who have never flown a plane before. We'll put them through pretty aggressive vet vetting process, interviews, aptitude testing, things like that. It's called the cadet program. Frontier will take 35 people every month and teach them how to fly. We're, we're going to make sure that these pilots are ready to come work for us. Cadets will train for two years at an ATP flight school like this one in Centennial. After 1,500 hours in the air, they'll get their airline transport license. We want to make sure that we mentor them effectively. We stay in close contact so that Frontier is the option for them. The next stop, Frontier where cadets simulate commercial flights using state-of-the-art technology at the company's head training center. What we'll teach them is how the systems work in the aircraft, the pressurization system, the fuel system, the hydraulics, things like that. Takeoffs to turbulence, flights so realistic, they feel like they're actually landing at DIA. Nice, greaser. Good job. <laughs> you gotta give up one and get another. So. For Arlisha Nisby, a career change is coming. I feel like it was the perfect opportunity to be a solution to the problem. Instead of coordinating planes, she'll eventually be flying one as one of the program's newest cadets. Just to be in the air and knowing that that's what I'm gonna be doing possibly for the rest of my life. <laughs> um, that's what I'm most excited about. So Arlisha Nisby says that she's going to begin the program later this year, and she already has some flight hours under her belt before the cadet program. Frontier says so far they've already had 500 people apply to become pilots, and some are Frontier employees like Alicia there. Uh, others have no aviation experience at all, which is fascinating. They're going to get some, though. You know, this yep. one of the big problems, though, with this industry is it's expensive to yeah. get going, and that's what uh, Frontier's hoping to help with. Uh, they say that the, one of the big challenges, too, is a lot of these pilots are retiring. They have to retire at 65, so there's definitely a shortage here. And a lot of these pilots will come from regional airlines, but that pool is so small now, they're going out and trying to get their own pilots. Let's recruit them, let's train them up, yeah. let's get them going. Yeah, you know, back in the day, too, Air Force pilots used to retire from the Air Force and then become airline captains, mm -hmm. you yeah. know? And, and I don't think that's happening as much these days. Yeah, that's true. And this program is about $90,000. That's, that's the cost of the cadet has to put that up front. However, the flip side is they will then get a job in on a commercial airline, which yeah. they pay more too. So starting first officers make about $100,000 and then of course you get raises, they go up from there. But uh, yeah, see, you're going into the program knowing that you're gonna have a job. Whereas if you just apply on your own, right. you may or may not have a job. Yeah. Well, it's the equivalent of, I guess, like a student loan or something like that. Right, exactly. But you have a guaranteed job at the end. You got a guaranteed job. You just got to pay off the cadet program once you're done. Right, <laughs> there you go. It's pricey. Yep. All right, very interesting, John. Thank you. You're welcome.